gentleman uh, who will be dissecting uh, the anti-government plan protest. First, uh, we have Dr. Steve Okori, who is a fellow Nigeria Army Resource Center and also a security consultant and a friend of the station here. We also have Mr. Idris Bilal Bala joining us. He is a member, Independent Youth of Nigeria. You're welcome to the studio, gentlemen. Thank you very much for having me. Let's start with you, uh, Doctor. You were smiling as I uh, was reading out the topic of this course today. Mm -hmm. It's um, the, our newspaper reviewer called it another NSAS protest in disguise. Do we see a repetition of what happened in 2020 happening again? Yeah. Um, you know, when we're talking uh, about. Uh, Enjoyments. It's not about the youth alone because uh, the only uh, idea about the reason why they are looking at protest is because uh, of the economic hardship. Uh, you can't take the facts from the current situation. The Germans are hungry. We've never seen this bad since the history of uh, this country. So it's not about youths alone. Adults, the aged, are also caught in the news web. When you go around the street, you see many elderly people begging for arms, you know. Mm. So I think the even younger ones are the ones now trying to see how to protest, yes. you know. And the, the protest for me is normal. It's just a public even of public expression yes. to certain government policies that are inconsistent with uh, the citizens' uh, needs. Okay. Yes. And um, when a uh, man cannot uh, 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 have access to the basic survival needs, yes. critical needs them is food. You know, when an Indian man, a young man, a young man, all that when you put them together, you will see that there is really justification yes. for the protest, just to express their objection, you know, their grievance. And you see, as a security consultant, uh, protests for me, the way it's done in this part of the world, at the end of it, you, you resort to violence. You know, we saw what happened in the answers. And, uh, the people that the private sector had the impact of the, uh, the protest during the answers was not in the private sector. Yes. People that had their private businesses and the hoodlums and the other criminals capitalized on the protest and began, and began to loot people's shops. Yes. I saw shops of Nigerians that were very hard for their money. They looted. They looted. You know, and the houses of People bent down, and so many things that we saw. On the part of government, we saw police station, government vehicles, buses, all by state government for public transportation. And we saw the, the disaster in Lagos, you know, and cross river and some other states that we saw those uh, uh, incidents. So, that's what I said. It's a way of expression. Well, well, Dr. Steve, you pointed out that um, this is not just a protest for the youth, yes. which I agree, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but then there is also a call by um, major stakeholders in the country yes. warning youth to desist from being used for this protest. And of course, we have right next to you a youth who is a member of the Independent Youth of Nigeria. From your perspective, Mr. Bilal, is this a protest for the youth or a protest for the country? What are we looking at? What are the statistics saying? Thank, yes. you, thank you very much for having me. Um, basically, to be honest with you, I will start with this. Um, when you build a nation, when you build the youth, you build the nation. And when you destroy the youth, you've actually destroyed the nation. So basically, we are at the time in the country, in the, in the, in the nation, where we need to remind ourselves about the urgent needs of what we are facing currently right now in our nation. It is very, very saddening 
that um, over time, for more than the last eight years, we as youths have not been independent, likewise the nation at, at, at large. So we are trying to say we know the mayhems that might be caused when we go and invest in this protest. Under this amazing platform, the independence of Nigeria, I'm also an advocate for youth in community development and nation building. Yes. We all know the bad vices that come attached with protests. We are not saying we shouldn't protest. Every Nigerians have the right at this current state because there's hardship, there's insecurity, there's other sort of vices within the spaces that you could think of. But when we look at the forecast, what is going to happen at the, not because I'm a youth, that I will, I will speak from a very myopic space. Let's look at a longer projection. What's going to be happening if we go on this? When you take a look at countries that are involved in this um, youth protest, like Kenya, Libya, and Sudan, the issues at hand were not even up to what is happening in Nigeria. But look at even when the president of Kenya has revoked what he what led to the protest. But the protest. The protest. But the protests continue. And we are in a country where there are all sort of things happening. We have the insurgencies, we have the banditries, we have IPO, we have a lot of things. And if we don't tackle this, the most important thing in a nation is to problem, don't solve problem, solutions, solve problem. So and if we don't look at it, this is a wake up call for not just the youth alone. We are calling on our leaders because there is a particular point in time. Everybody has a threshold, everybody has a bearing point. We are youths, we are the leaders of tomorrow. But our dreams of becoming leaders of tomorrow have been deprived by those who were once leaders of tomorrow. But if we take a look at it at a longer run, we need to understand that this everybody has a limit to what he could bear. There will be a time where we could not pass that limit and it just have to outburst. Well, well, let me hold you on that now. Uh, the protest itself, mm. uh, Dr. Steve, does not have a face. The protesters do not have a face yet mm. that we know of. Mm. But captured on the front page of the first news, as well as the front page of the news direct, well, let's take uh, the first news first. It says, you can't smack a child and ask them not to cry. NLC begs Tinubu to engage planned protest leaders. President, talk to youths. Ndome concurs. This is according to uh, Senator Ali Ndome. And right next to it is the Daily Times newspaper. Right under the masthead there, it reads NLC to Tinubu address public grievances amid looming national protest. Urges President to invite protest organizers for dialogue. Tinubu, traditional religious leaders caution youths against planned protests. Now there are, there are a lot of um, th there are a lot of indices here. Well, mm. uh, let's let's also take the news direct Nigerian news direct. No protest needed. We are tackling hardship, economic downturn. Tinubu appeals. Food inflation. We share your pain. Half our salaries. Reps, speaker. Dialogue with protesters. Avoid confrontation, NLC President or just FG. Can, Labour, Students Union, others disown planned protest back FG. Dr. Steve, hmm. let me get back to you. Uh, uh, firstly, like I said, the protesters do not have a face yet. Hmm. But still, the NLC president is urging the, pres the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to engage with them. Hmm. So first things first, who are we engaging with? That's a big question. Because... I've been following the issues and you just hear different groups. You hear animal, youth groups, missing exercising groups and all that. So who are the, the leaders that are spearheading the national protest? Now, I don't think they are known. So who will the government now engage with? And we begin to see how to disseminate the information down to the organs that are uh, beneath the ladder. But but the, the, fact is, the fact is, why they are mentioning youth 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 because we are the young ones, you know. The young tells us that uh, we have uh, a population of about 229 million, and uh, that 229 million, 70 percent, constitutes the age in the youth bracket, and uh, you have about uh, 60 million out of the 229 million youths, you know. And uh, when we begin to look at the larger picture, it is more on the youths, 
when injured managers are well said that have the strength and the capability to come work or send them to test. So whatever the needs, that's why we see the mention of the users in the pages of the newspapers or headlines. And the emphasis is really good because they feel that whatever um, objective, whatever they achieve at the end of the protest, will also be beneficial to the, the agent and the adults yes. that are not in very good category. category yeah. you know. So now, uh, I don't know the, the advice from the NEC that the uh, President and the Foreign Ministry will give to leaders. Who are the leaders? I haven't, I've been following the trend of events. I haven't seen any uh, somebody who has come out to say he is expelling the national protests. You know. I listened to the faction of the National Youth uh, Council uh, on radio this morning, and the president was talking about uh, uh, youth should not come out to come out to the protest. It will cause instability uh, to the community and the, the nation at large. You know, he made mention of the issues uh, that happened during the last protest. But the fact of the matter is that uh, after the government said they are working on the meetings to see that. Uh, this hardship is reduced drastically. Well, I've seen the effort they're making. Uh, I'm not going to speak on behalf of government. I'm a professional. But the fact is, we see where uh, uh, taxes and certain things about imports of rules and all that are being reduced, or there's labor for entrepreneurs or business people that involve themselves in such a business or trade. You know. So, the whole lot is that. But the key point why we are seeing all this is because of. Uh, the the uh, subsidy yes. yes yes the sudden subsidy number is the major cause of the financial prices of goods yes. and commodities exactly in the country. Mm, so uh, I, I I felt that it was the you know, way if there is an economic team in place then to have critically looked at it and work out the realities of how the subsidy uh, number would have been done in the gradual uh, level of step. Now the fact is. Uh, I still want to hold government accountable because we don't have a situation where certain persons, the rescues are the game. Certain individuals are benefiting from the subsidy you know, from the subsidy you know, mm -hmm. you know, And it means that those certain individuals are the main uh, agencies and government that are supposed to follow them and we don't see the corruption that is involved in this. We have the UFCC and the ICPC and the UFI and the post of uh, security agencies that we have. Why we now begin to suffer? We are not going to suffer from the inadequacies of agencies and government that are having the responsibility of uh, checkmating you know, people that are causing problems for us in this country. You know, because we hear that uh, approvals are given and the required quantity are not supplied. Sometimes we don't even bring it at all. L l let, me, let me hold you there and go back to Mr. Bilal. Uh, just recently, we heard of uh, two. Uh, people being arrested in Kano. Uh, one was arrested and detained in Kano, the other was arrested and brought uh, down to Abuja here. And um, we, so far, that's just the only news that we've heard about them. And this is in relation to the planned protest. Obviously, these are young people and uh, who came out with the hashtag and bad government. In your opinion, do you sort of feel like there is a particular demography of youth in the country where this protest is springing from. Are we looking at youth, the northern youth from the northern part of the country? Is it the south is youth? Uh, are we looking at youth from the west? Who exactly okay, thank you is behind okay. this? So thank you very much for this. Um, I'm an advocate for youth in politics, grassroots community development. You see, when you look at the demography of what you have just brought to me, when you look at um, the Northern Youth Forum, the Southern Youth Forum, majority of those instigating this protest are not even the youth. There are some people who just feel it's not favoring them in the country, so how can we just try to see how we could just spoil or just interfere with the, the progress of the country? So even the youth at this particular point in time have been able to engage with a couple of my team members. Yes. Nobody even have a definite mindset towards where this protest is going because when you ask a lot of youth what they will tell you is there is hunger yes. there is insecurity so from my space what i think is actually instigated those who are instigating this are still part of those who are still 
underground who are the government they are not going to put their face not on the picture they are just underground failing youths who don't even know much about it because i tell people a lot the real empowerment is not giving people money like this it's the empowerment of the mindset yes. so many youths don't even have that mindset towards positive or creative thinking so when you are in a space where you don't even have people who to guide you anybody just come ah, let's do this you are in a complete state where whatever is just have to be bearable to you they just give you a token let's come and let's go and do it you said something earlier on of which you made mention of a direction to be honest with you i'm looking at the aftermath of what might happen i'm speaking for my space and i know how it feels the country is not fooling anybody it is it is it is it is clear we could feel the hardship within the space of one year but the most important thing in life is we can't use we can't, we, can't, we can't attack we have to understand the problem before we look for solution to it and what are those problems the government are aware of it there is subsidy just like my consultant have said yes they just within this subsidy, subsidy removal. removal before you know hardship and everywhere is going so uh, people are just looking for a particular means to just make use of this protest and instigate their bad interest and, and, and just and use it as out of pitch. So you made mention of two people who were actually arrested. arrested I was called upon um, by the national youth leader from Kadu Agassiz of yes. um, because it's still part of my jurisdiction because I'm the president of Life Camp Government Association. So I was in a seminar in, in, in Gobola School and um, University then I, I got a call from him. He was like, do you know what is happening within our space? I said, what's happening? He said there are 50, they call them 50 gangs. Now within broad daylight. 50 gangs? Yeah, they call themselves 50, 50 gangs. Broad daylight, they come within the axis of Angwan, Silent, Karum, and those axes. They come broad daylight, come to the house, just take your properties, your phone, your food stuff. With so, your so, so these people that were arrested, do they have any relation with the 50 no, no, gang? No, 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 they don't have any relation with the 50. What I'm, just trying, what I'm trying to establish is this. This is what is happening within yeah, here yes. so in Kano there are other instances people will just take make use of this protest to do bad vices just just the way we saw in the in the NSAS protest where um, a lot of COVID-19 palliative warehouses yeah, were yeah. looted as a result of you know people infiltrating into uh, the actual protesters mm -hmm. causing mayhem mm -hmm. so the protest might be hijacked Exactly. Understand. So the main purpose might not even be achieved mm -hmm. because the, if it's for a this, 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 in, in, in a constitution, civil protest is it, it, it is something that everybody in a country needs to, to be part of. But when you look at the current state in our nation, is it what we need? I'm a youth. I'm a graduate. I'm not here working, but it's, I'm just trying to see how the aftermath of what is going to happen That's if we are not very careful with what is happening. We are, we, are, we are in a state where even your brother, don't even your neighbor, don't even use food for yourself. We are in a country where we have religious sentiment all over the place. We are in a country where we have problems of tribal differences. We are in a country where there are lots of atrocities happening. And if we don't actually wake up to this call, and I'm calling on the, 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 the executive and the legislators because there is, like I said from the beginning, there's a threshold where everybody could be and reach. Yes. And when you get to that point in time, you can't at yeah, that point in time it's just definitely happen. so this is high time we still have a space why we are here is just to remind the youth and all other stakeholders that nigeria is our own we have no country other than this and you don't expect someone from ghana to come and fix nigeria for us well i, I like the statement that you made about you know some people who uh, were not able to find themselves at the corridors of power trying to utilize this protest as a means of instigating violence and pushing their agenda at um, disrupting the government of the day. Now, um, I will draw attention to a publication on the first news yesterday where it reads with the headline story, Help Nigerians in need instead of spreading lies, says Peter Obi, as Onanuga insists Obi's supporters I pop behind planned nationwide process. Let me get your take on this, uh, uh, Dr. Steve. This is a publication captured on the front page of the first newspaper where uh, Peter Obi is obviously saying um, that obviously calling on the federal government to help Nigerians and stop spreading lies while Onanoga is attacking him, saying his supporters as well as I pop are behind the planned protest. I, I, I think um, 
similarities between um, this plan of protest and uh, what happened in 2020. I would always make reference to that because um, it's the most recent uh, protest that ended in a very bad way out of the spate of all the protests we've had in this country. Uh, now, on, on the front page of the leadership newspapers captured, it reads that the federal government palliatives one week after 21 states await truckloads of grains. This is captured on the front page of the leadership newspaper. FG palliatives. One week after 21 states await truckloads of grains. And uh, Anambra, Akwaibo, Bayelsa, Kwara, Rivers take delivery. Labour asks Telugu to dialogue with protest leaders. Yobe won't join protest, says Governor Maimala Bullu. Uh, Mr. Bilal, let me take let me get your take on this. Firstly, let's start from the last um, caption there, where the Yobe State Government, uh, Maimala Boni, Governor Maimala Boni, is uh, saying that no individual in the state would join the protest. Are we seeing a situation where the governor is about to meet these protesters with brute force, or what are we talking about here? Okay, so basically, with regards to Yobe, everybody has a way of actually interfering with matters yes so to me from my own perspective i think that's not the wise way to actually go you can actually use force hands to people who have been pushed to the law you have to think of ways to engage them have a dialogue with them but when you have when you are trying to enforce law on them you are not reducing pain but you are, not, you are rather you are inflicting more pain on them so on this on this piece i would like to just um, remind us on something when you take a look at the second standard of the national anthem, yes. it says a lot, which says, help the youth, the truth to know. We have gotten to a point at the time in our nation where the youth, what they just want 
in time is just to get to know the truth. Yes. The truth is truth. Nothing but the truth. Now, you see, you were making reference to grains and all. A friend of mine called me this night. She told me that, ah, are you aware of um, the government giving grains and maybe fertilizers? And the saddest part of it is they are selling it. It's, um, it is it is not mine. Then I told her something. I said, those people that are giving those fertilizers, why won't they, why won't they sell it? Why? Because they are not the, the fertilizers are more of use to them. Yes. You can't give me a fertilizer because I'm not a farmer. The main people who are supposed to be giving those particular sort of things are not the people who they are actually giving. And even if I'm a farmer, I can't go to the farm. It's a treaty. So we need to understand what to do at a particular point in time. Yeah. You can't you can't mm. you can't deal in a particular problem and you now come and give maybe rice and this to actually see that you want to suppress what is happening. But, but are you are you also seeing a similarity? You? During the entire protest, uh, COVID-19 palliatives were, were dished out, given to states. Mm -hmm. Some of them were hoarded, a few were distributed. Now, during the protest, that was when there was this big revelation that, oh, these palliatives mm -hmm. have actually not been given to the people, rather they've been stored in warehouses, and there were mass meetings across the country, uh, in places like Joss, Adamawa, you know, even in the southeast, several places. Yet again, we are seeing another protest looming at the verge of a time when the government is giving out palliatives to states to stem or sort of douse the effects of the economic hardship in the country. Okay. Is this another reputation? I think um, this is not the best way to actually go as a nation because um, when there is hardship, you don't give out palliative or food stuff to ease hardship. Rather, you look for where the problem is and try to offer solutions to it. Now, what is the major source of this hardship? It was when the very first time the subsidy was being taken off, and fuel raising up. Yes. And fuel is a is a very it's, it's more like a driving force to basically everything in our current day in the nation. Yes. So what you need to do is this: if you are taking off subsidy, fuel. Is high prices as high as are yes. then you are not bringing palliative as a sort of trying to ease the burden of food. It's not, it, it is not actually good to the ears. So, what I think we need to do is to try our best to see how we can move for lasting solution, not a temporary solution giving out palliative. Palliative will just last for just maybe within a small time, and after the palliative, what next? You give people you give federal how many of the how many of the state governments have they been given those palliative we've seen it you know some states that palliatives have been given and they give money not to it there is no proper check up on all those palliatives if it is actually being distributed even if that is the way but it's not even actually been done the right way and which is which is not even actually the best way to go about it well, Dr. Steve, don't you think that um, some of these short-term policies or short-term solutions to uh, long-term problems or age-long problems by the federal government is what is giving more credence and push to a planned anti-government protest? Because yes, we, the government is doing its it's is making efforts in its capacity mm. but some people would argue that the government is not doing enough that the people down below are just receiving crumbs from the top is this another way of fueling up uh, the agitation that have that has been in the minds of of many nigerians uh, since the inception of uh, you know this regime yeah, in, in, in system, uh, solutions to the problem it could be short term, mid term, or long term. Now, as you plan for the long term, certain measures or certain things should be in place to be able to take care of the short term and mid term as you prefer to to the long term uh, solution. Yes. But I think uh, this part of the way we're experiencing here is a deliberate uh, uh, thing from the point of our uh, political leaders. Because you um, aspire for an office, you campaign, you make promises during your campaign, you know that you are first to, to the electorate and you give the reasons why we should vote for you. And the moment you get their votes and you resume these offices, they tend to forget what they told the people. Now they, they, they fail in their promises. I think one of the reasons is that they are not prepared for this office, if you ask me. Some persons will just leave because of their geopolitical location. Yes. 
they feel that they can aspire for an office of the government. And they take to win. Exactly. But they're not prepared. So you must have to be prepared. How many leaders, political leaders, do we have one vision? Vision do they have? You don't have to come and sit in an office. And that is why you see failure. They deliberately impoverish their people. And when they do, they call them either to serve as political dogs or one thing or the other. They call them human peanuts. And they serve that purpose. So there's a whole lot of the you know. You know I, I, I begin to remember that when God created Nigeria in 18, when God created Nigeria, if you need to, in, in short, like you, you get uh, other team or uh, moving appliances and all that, yes. it comes in the yes. yeah. yeah. What does a man do? It's okay. to guide you yeah. in there. What is the manner for this country? That is a big question. What is the manner? Is it that God is not having the manner to remove us? Or we have the manner? And the world according to what is contained in the world. You see a lot of countries that have started as third world countries. Yes. They've gone ahead. Way ahead of us. And the problem is political leadership. You see Nigerians, individuals, look at this man, one man, vibrant. I've been listening to him. He has his own to contribute to the development of this country. But the leadership of this country, political leadership, has no season. Every Nigeria has something to offer. But until the leadership identifies the Nigerian. Go to US, UK, Canada, everywhere. The Nigerians are excellently well. But when it comes to the plan, country Nigeria, why are we failing? So we are nothing wrong. Sometimes you see communities put together and communications is made in how to fix one thing about in the country. Those recommendations are dropped in shelves. After spending what is done, done after spending a huge amount of money to put that communities in place. You, you made a statement about you know people running for office when they are not even ready to be in office. There is a lot of incompetence in the system. There is a lot of um, shortage of information, knowledge, the technical know-how to run a government uh, in our political space. And uh, from the look of things, you would agree with me that the majority of the politicians or leaders that we have are, are people of you know, the older uh, mm -hmm. and you also rightly pointed out that the youth should be given a chance mm -hmm. to engage actively engage and participate in the politics and the governance of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, coming back to you now, uh, Mr. Bilal, what is your take on this? Do you think that the youth are truly ready to take over the mantle of leadership and if yes we all know how expensive it is to to run a contest for election what can be done differently to bring in youth into the limelight and allow them have a level playing ground okay thank you very much for this so before i could actually go into this in details i would like to we can't actually dispute the fact that this government has done one thing that we need to upload I think for more than 40 years, it has never been a new administration that has given a huge space in government like what has so has done. That is something that has been given an access. I'm giving you go and see where you're thinking cap and good results. Yes. So, but the question is this the youth, youth are no longer recommended to the top. To the top. Most times it's just okay, maybe me, my dad is maybe um, the governor of this, the national community serve as a PE or as, a, as an SA to this person. Mm -hmm. So you don't even have sufficient information on how to actually interject a particular so what is happening at all. We have it happening at the bottom of the youth. Mm -hmm. yes, so I'm basically um most times I tell people a lot the majority of our youth are not even ready. The reasons they need that is they don't want to be tested to be trusted. So who is ready? The question the who is ready to so is uh, it's not just the youth alone. Yes. Wherever you find someone irrespective of your age but then I think as long as you meet up the criteria and you you are you, 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 your past antecedents actually show that you are going to actually work because like I said the new experience right now they don't want to be tested to be trusted yes. why I said that is because of this I have an I'm, I'm a president of an association which is um, the life camp going by the association I'm also a member of this a member of that but doing that a lot of people will tell me that ah Press you do. How do you 
that I, I saw you went for a court invitation to go and meet this minister. How much did he give you? You were in a court invitation to go and meet this person. So, so, so the thing is, we just know nobody wants to actually go through the processes. And that's where we actually get it wrong. The majority of the don't want to pass two steps in life. You just want to get here from bottom to top. And it's usually not like that. You have to understand the process, follow it gradually before you'll be able to aspire for for, for leadership. But now you just saw how many has money as a youth. You know, I want to contest with a particular position without even knowing what the position I is all about. So that's the issues we are facing. So the best way to actually approach this is not regardless of your age or your tribal difference or, or every, whatever it is, as long as you are competent enough, you understand the vision, everybody to be given equal opportunity to contest. Well, Dr. Steve, a mm -hmm. lot of um, the older generation would argue that uh, the youth of these days are very impatient mm -hmm. with life mm -hmm. and, you know, achieving success and growth itself. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the, it also brings us to the question of youthful exuberance, where people just want to, in a snap of finger, make millions of naira, just become big. In, in our own terms now, we call it to blow. They just want to blow and somebody just out, fresh out of the university wants to be given a, a top uh, government appointment with, with official cars and all of that. Uh, is there something missing? Where is the missing link? What have we left out in orienting, giving an orientation to the youth on how processes should be followed? I, I think that um, we need a generation for, for this because um, the other generation has not positioned themselves as mentors to the younger generation. Yeah. We've seen the other generation from 1960 to date, they are still in power. In power. They want to have a leadership, they want to. How many of them are mentors? I can't find any of them mentors. When you are a mentor, people tell me that you should think of me. Yes. From you. What are you doing? Are you doing it for the purpose of, of posterity's sake? But at the exit of So, for instance, 
talking about fire, you want to use to be engaged, and you want to be involved in one thing or the other, you need this power. Yes. Since 1998 to date, if you really have money that is spent on power, you know, and you are still facing the same challenge. Is it that the people that are serving the responsibilities of uh, fixing this power and the witches and the wizards and prefer darkness? <laughs> You know, because which is the they don't want light. They don't like light. So who are they? Why is it beyond what the government will do? You know? Well, let's let's also come back to the protest now. Um, back to the planned protest mm -hmm. itself. You are a security expert, uh, yes. Dr. Steve, and with your knowledge of how uh, information is disseminated across security agencies, don't you think by now mm -hmm. the DSS, mm -hmm. the NIA? the police, yeah. all this, the secret service, everybody right. Right. involved, stakeholders, mm -hmm. should have known who is behind the planned protest, not necessarily to apprehend them or to harm them in mm -hmm. any way, mm -hmm. but the federal government wants to dialogue with them. Mm -hmm. The federal government wants to come to a round table and have a conversation. Shouldn't there be some sort of intel with regards to who is behind this so that there will be a that even if it is a dialogue that is not in the public space mm -hmm. it could be a dialogue between the protesters or the planned protesters and the federal government what do you make of this sir? yeah yeah um you know one has to do with um, domestic intelligence that's the the, the duty on the moment of the DSS. yes and uh, at this point we expect that the DSS should be working in collaboration with the Nigerian police force yes whose duties are mainly to um, internal how to say to cope or combat internal security challenges. Uh, it's a matter of intelligence here. And when certain information is passed to these security agencies, it's for them to see that that information is processed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why is going through that process you know, of evaluating it and all that? Because because intelligence at that point it is established that Mr. XYZ, Mrs. XYZ are the people behind National Light Protesters. Yes. So at that point, we have established that these are the people. Then we invite them for, for a conversation and a discussion. You know. And for me, at this point in time, I expect and want to believe that all the security agencies, the relevant ones, must have been seen to be working in collaboration with each other. Yes. You know, at least synergizing, you know, to win the hotspots, you know, in the event where the protests will still go and in the event where and they will be eventuality. You know, they will be seen that they, they are proactive to address, address the things from the local situations when they arrive. Yeah. So that when the crop mapping, you know, in this part of the world, we are more of a reactor than a things happen. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, don't, we don't plan to forestall them, yeah, we yeah. react after they must have happened. Exactly. And, you know, and the, the, the one thing that I discovered is that. And the law enforcement agencies have had a lot even more trying to handle uh, civil uh, disturbances like this in you know, the event when they happen. You know, and that is why we see uh, when they are deployed. You know, we don't see the people that are deployed for such operations are not trained in how to be civil. You know, and, and, and they thereby having escalations and violence in the process. Exactly. You know, so I think all these are things that right now and as a community should be working and they are going to see that possibly that it doesn't happen and in the event when it happens it should be properly managed well in, in closing now uh, Mr. Bilal as a youth and as a youth advocate at that uh, what will be your message to every single Nigerian youth out there uh, whether uh, planners of the protest or people who intend to join or people who might feel compelled to join if eventually the protest pulls through, what would be uh, your words of advice to them? Okay, thank you very much for this. So, um, first thing first, you can't actually love something. You can't wish good for something that you don't have a love for. Nigeria is our ours to build. We need to reassure our love and commitment to our nation, irrespective of the current issues happening in our nation today. We need to understand that we are the custodians of Nigeria and if we don't work towards positive impact in nation building we will actually do much in society so now I'm calling on every like-minded Nigerians out there to please understand this we all know 
that is not something that everybody is the what the current state in our nation is not what everybody wants at a particular time in our nation. But we should put it behind our back that what is the aftermath of this current situation? Is it something that we wish to see that our children or our generations to come will be paid through? So I'm calling on everybody, my like-minded youths and everybody. Let's try our best to see that we unite ourselves in the spirit of solidarity, peace, love and unity. Nigeria is ours to protect and to our leaders. We know that you people are the only people that could ensure that whatever is happening will be put to end. So we're calling on everybody by extension, not just the youth alone, but the political space, the religious leaders, our traditional rulers by extension. Everybody needs to understand that to build a nation is not a one-man thing. Regardless of your positions, we need to put on our thinking cap and effect change on how to ensure we have a smooth rule in our current day nation. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Bilal. Uh, Dr. Steve, in a few words as we round up. Uh, yeah. Um, it's nice to know. Um, the, <coughs> the government needs to do what they need to do. You know, policies must be seen to be friendly with uh, the citizens there. Uh, uh, that they have in yes. the country. And um, building a nation is not by the political leaders alone. That's the way we start. All of us must be on deck, you know, for all the leaders there, political leaders, traditional leaders, religious institutions, and all that. They must be seen to be working in harmony, you know. Uh, the government, of course, they have a listening ear. They should uh, listen more, act more, you know. So that's uh, not also that the rules are back to the actions, you know, so that they know that is wrong. You know, farmers can have access to their farm. Uh, these are things on the hand uh, side, because kidnappers are there, maggots are there, troubling farmers, and also troubling and abandoned citizens that are that go about their local businesses. Yes. You know, that don't even rely on the government, government to survive. You know, so all of these things are put in place. I think there will be, be a, a good and a pathway for the new uh, development. All right, thank you very much, gentlemen, for sharing your thoughts on this uh, particular bonding issue. It's been wonderful having you here in the studio. Thank you very much. <laughs>